Hi, and thanks for coming back to the Planner Tutorial Hub. Today's video tutorial will show you how to import and update status information from an Excel file back into Primavera. Now this is a common scenario and let's check out the project plan that I've got here, the air liquid plant. It's a good 1300 line project plan, which for some people is fairly small. I've got a number of subcontracting companies working on this project. You can see they are identified by this RESP, Responsibility Activity Code. A lot of these companies in this scenario don't have Primavera. So how can I get status information from them in an easier way than calling them up and asking for updates on activity, say, AC124? Well, the easier way to do this is to send them in Excel extract of their activities, have them update Excel, and then we'll re-import those updates back into Primavera. That's the scenario we're gonna walk through today. So let's get started. Before I even attempt to export anything to Excel, it's a really good idea to have a backup copy of this project plan. The preferred way for me, anyways, to make a backup is to actually create a baseline. So I created this baseline just before we hit uh, record on the recording. So I've got a baseline here I can revert back to in case my updating doesn't look good to me afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead, close out of there, and let's get started. Let's go ahead and start to export our information to Excel. With the project open, we'll go to the File menu and go down to Export. We'll choose Spreadsheet XLS as the export format and go ahead and click Next. For the export type, we'll be exporting the activity sheet. And if you choose to update your resource assignments and units, you could also export the resource assignment sheet. To keep, keep this tutorial shorter in length, I'm gonna exclude that part today. So we'll go ahead and click Next. Choose this guy, click Next. Here's where we get to choose what information gets exported to Excel in terms of columns and filters. So I already have a template created here called the CanDo template. CanDo is one of my contractors. And let's go and have a look at it. So you can see I've chosen the columns that I'd like to export, essentially, I've taken the defaults, I've added the actual start and finish dates, the activity percent complete, as well as this RESP activity code. The other thing I've done is I've filtered this acti these activities. The first filter down at the bottom here, the RESP filter, filters only activities related to can do. The next filter then filters out non-summary activity types. So you can see what that filter looks like here. And lastly, I've created a special filter here called 2006 Week 11 Activities Starting or In Progress. And what this filter does essentially is limit the activities to those starting in Week 11, which is this week starting March 11th to the 17th and include any activities that are already in progress. So I'll want to status those that are starting or are already in progress. And lastly, what I've done is on the sort tab is I've sorted my activities by start date. It's gonna make it much easier to status that way. So that essentially is my can do template and I'll click okay to save it, we'll click next. And on this page, we get to identify a file name. So I've already got that file name filled in. And if you don't, you can just click here to define where that file is going to go. We'll go ahead and do our export. Here's the information now imported into Excel. There's a few things you want to be aware of when uh, you export information to Excel and are planning to re-import that spreadsheet back with updates. The first thing you want to notice is across the top here, we have um, a bunch of fields in row one. 
it's really important that you don't change how these fields are named or edit them in any way. If you do, the import process may not work for you, and that goes as well for the column number two information. All the other information can be updated, and of course there's rules around how you update information. For example, um, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for me to just go and change the WBS IDs. So some information is there uh, for informational purposes and can't be updated, and some of it can be updated. For example, this activity status field, it essentially has three values. It either has a value of in progress, or if we scroll down here a little ways, It also has a value of not started. I've filtered out any other activities that would have a value of completed. So you can't arbitrarily just put any information you want in the activity status field that has to contain those values. The other thing you want to notice is the workbooks that have been created. This workbook that I'm looking at is called task. And oddly enough, that actually refers to a table in the Primavera database. You don't want to edit the name of this worksheet as well, as well as see this user data worksheet also has information that I suggest you leave alone. We want to make sure that the reimport feature works well, and by mucking around with some of that information, there's no guarantees it will work. I've turned on an, a filter here in Excel using this filter button and then that allows me to use these filters so I can uh, choose to look at perhaps just the not started activities and that's a very handy feature in Excel that can help you in your updating as well. Let's go ahead and start updating some of these activities. As you can see I have a very very long list of activities and that's going to make this tutorial really long. So what I've decided to do is to come over here and to limit my list to a particular resource. So what I'm going to do is limit this list to my millwright using these built-in Excel features. And there we go. I can see three activities for the millwright. And it looks like I've got two activities that are started and 40% complete both in one activity that has not started yet this will work out perfectly for our purposes. Inputting data into this spreadsheet is going to be very finicky. I can't simply type in a date here. For example, type in the 20th of March 2006. The reason I'm not able to type that in is because Excel likes to accept that input and automatically convert it to a date type in its world. That's not going to work for me. If I click on this finish date, you're going to notice the formatting of this finish date up here. And see that little um, apostrophe at the beginning? That indicates that this is a text field. In fact, all of these fields are text fields. But you'll notice the date that I typed in is not a text field. So now we have a problem. When I go to import this information back into Primavera, Primavera is not going to like the fact that this is not text field. So I have a few tricks. One of those tricks is to simply copy a date from another field and paste it in. And that ensures that I have, I maintain the proper formatting. I can now go ahead and edit that date. And that makes things relatively easy for me. So copy and paste is a good strategy for you. Now if I've handed this spreadsheet over to a subcontractor and they haven't been savvy enough to follow the rules that I just explained to you, then we have to resort to some other uh, nifty tips and tricks. Here's another trick. There's a package of utilities available that plug into Microsoft Excel called ASAP Utilities. Go ahead and Google it and see what you find. 
You can use ASAP Utilities, install it into your Excel, and use the mishmash of uh, Excel Utilities basically to help you reformat some of the data. So I'm going to use ASAP Utilities to fix these dates and to convert them back to text. And essentially what I'll do is I'll go to up here to the ASAP Utilities tab, the text, and I'll basically insert the apostrophe before um, converting my text, co converting those numbers back to text. And that's a very quick and easy way to convert a whole swath of activities back to text. So go check out ASAP Utilities. Putting some dates in the actual finish column is the extent that I'm going to go to to update this spreadsheet for this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and save my data and I'm going to close out of Excel or close this sheet anyways and come on back here to Primavera. When you re-import your data into Primavera it's important that you already have the project open. So I'll go ahead with the project open, go to the file menu, go ahead and import. We're going to import a spreadsheet Click Next, select the file to import. There's the file. Go ahead and click Next. Which part uh, from the file, which tables do I want to import? Uh, essentially, these, these checkboxes relate to the different worksheets and the data that I had already exported. So I'll just choose the one that's available, the activities. Okay, my import action is to update the existing project. And as a last step, I just need to go here and make sure that I choose the project from this list. Okay, we'll go ahead and click Next and Finish. So very quickly, I went ahead and applied a couple filters. I filtered this to show just the activities uh, that had um, the millwright on it, as well as the RESP for uh, my subcontractor can do. And that's so that I could zoom into the following activity. So the first one here is the one I have highlighted, AC4488. You'll notice now that it has an actual finish date of March the 20th. And the other two are these two here, AC10624, as well as the one below it, 626, also have the appropriate um, finish dates. These are, in fact, the finished dates that I entered in the spreadsheet. So the next step would be to go ahead and reschedule the project with a new data date after importing those updates from my spreadsheet. For the sake of this tutorial, I've kept it fairly simple and just work with a few activities. But you can see how, with a large project plan, sending a long list of activities via spreadsheet to a subcontractor, perhaps, could be really uh, beneficial to you and save you a lot of time. The other thing I'm going to have you look into is the reflection functionality in Primavera. You could use the reflection functionality to review the updates that come back via Excel, import those updates into a reflection project, go ahead and merge that reflection project to review the updates and ensure that everything looks kosher before you go in head and merge those updates back into your master project plan. So that's something to look at and we have done another tutorial on reflections. Go ahead and check that out. Thanks for checking out Planner Tutorial Hub. Hope you have a great day.